playing around in the shop today and realized uh, I had never finished up part two of finding optical zero. So, welcome to part two. I'm going to go over two other methods of uh, finding your optical zero. And just as a reminder, if you're using fixed scope rings, uh, this doesn't really pertain to you. Um, you might do it just to find out how far off from zero you are. But uh, this is really for the guys that are using adjustable adjustable mounts or you know like these um, by Eagle Vision or Sports Match FX. Um, this is for you guys. So the first method I'm going to go over is called the click method, and it's real simple. You basically will back your turret out or turn it in, whichever way you want to go, it doesn't matter. But just keep twisting it and slowly until you feel that resistance. Once you feel it give you resistance, stop. Don't try to force it anymore. Okay, now what you want to do is simply turn it the other way and while you're turning, count the clicks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and on and on and on until you get all the way to the other end. There's another way and a shortcut to do this as well. If you use these numbers on your turret, um, you can use those to kind of speed the process up a little bit. But go all the way to the other end. That's going to give you a number. Let's say it's 120 clicks. All you need to do is come back 60 clicks. And that'll give you optical zero for your vertical turret, uh, reticle. Um, do the same thing with left and right. Just turn it until you feel it give you that resistance. Count your clicks back, because these two may not be the same. You may get a different number. Um, and I like to think of this as a mechanical zero, because you're using these clicks as a guide, whereas with the mirror, you were using the optics to give yourself a guide. The next method I'm going to go over is called the spin method. And what you'll want is a piece of graph paper or something downrange that you can focus on and that has lines on it as a point of reference. Uh, I used a piece of graph paper, it's at about 15 yards. You want to loosen up your scope mounts so that your scope f spins uh, freely. And then what you're going to see when you look, oh, also put some tape either on your rifle or on your scope so that when you turn it and it bumps into your gun, you don't do, you don't damage anything. So, got you guys looking through the scope. What you're going to see is when you turn, if you're out of whack, when you turn your scope, you're going to see, you're going to see it make a rainbow type. See how the crosshairs make that rainbow? That means you're off. So, we'll bring it down a little bit, give it another spin, down a little bit, and see how that rainbow, that arc, it's a lot smaller now? That means I'm doing the right thing. And that's all you need to do is just keep chasing it back and forth until you f until that your crosshairs don't move at all. Still got a little bit. Let's try there. And now I'm pretty, really pretty close. So that was the spin method. Um, US Optics uh, swears by the spin method. You can find a video of this as well on their website. Um, I like the spin method. I like the mirror. I mean, I like the clicks. I like all three, but for different reasons. So it's really up to you what you want to do. As long as you get your scope close, chipmunk. Um, as long as you get your scope uh, close to optical zero, that's what you're after. Absolute perfection is great, but just get it close, and then you, you'll know that you're doing the best thing you can for your scope. This concludes part two. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, post them down below, or see me on Ergon Nation. 
Uh, I'm over there a, a heck of a lot. Uh, as always, happy shooting. <laughs>